What's up everybody? This is Daniel from the GoTo family. I am here in the beautiful coastal city of Mumbai, India. As you can see, we have the Gateway of India behind me and I'm just walking by the seaside here and uh, I'm about to meet with my friend Nishant and uh, we're gonna do some eating today. Today it's all about the food right here by the seaside. This is the Kalaba area of Mumbai. It's basically South Mumbai. Uh, I think he's here. Let's go. Let's go meet him. Hello. Hello. Hi, Nishan. Hi. How are you? How are you? Nice to I'm meet you. I'm great. I'm great. Uh, Welcome to Bombay. Uh, Mathis, to be precise, as we see here in Kalaba. Yes. Pan Arabian food here. Exactly. Super You'll see a lot of it. You'll see a lot of it. There's a lot of surprises in store for you. Wait for it. All right, so should we sit right here? Yes, please. All right. Okay, so let's take a look. This is a huge menu, by the way. It's like this, an album. Th this, honestly, I feel like you, you have like the thousand and one Arabian Nights written in here. It's like, it's huge. <laughs> you see this? Over a hundred items. That's crazy. The menu here covers every single thing. I think we should just kind of let the chef suggest a couple of definitely, things. Definitely. What do you think? Yeah, okay. Let's, let's leave it up to the chef. All right, so this is the kefta hummus. As we can see, it has a nice pink hue to it. It's absolutely gorgeous. I've never had a pink hummus before. So I guess this is made with beetroot. Yes. Correct? Yes, yes. Okay, so that's why it's pink like that. How should we do this? Go for it, take it. All right. You want you want to try? Yes, sure. Let's go for it. Cheers. All right, cheers, <laughs> man. All right, let's do this. Oh, wow. Mm. Mm. That's nice. really good. Mm. It has like a silky, soft kind of texture to it. Usually hummus has a bit more of a kick, kind of like it's a little more acidic. This is really, really silky smooth. Very, very good. Very refreshing. Yeah, indeed. I, I just saw your eyes bulge out. You're like, oh man, this is amazing. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Spicy cheese hummus in this, it looks like, uh, what do you call that? It's smoked. Oh it's my god. Cold. Oh, you can smell. It honestly smells like campfire. This is the smoky cauliflower. I can touch it. I was afraid it was hot. No, it's not. Yeah. Can you oh. just open it for us? Okay, okay. Oh, look at that. Oh my god. Oh my god. It smells like wood burning. Yeah, that's cherry wood. What? Cherry wood. Cherry wood. cherry wood. Okay, where is the cherry wood? That's in the smoke. That's smoke. Oh, smoke. okay, okay, okay. Cherry wood. That's amazing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some of this, uh, some of this hummus right here. I'm just gonna make myself a plate of hummus. So I'm taking some of those kafta balls. There's a topping here. I didn't previously see. So there's something at the top there. Get some of those onions. Put them on top. Let's dig into the second hummus. Put it on the plate here. Let's give it a try. Oh my God. That is so silky smooth. That's incredible. It has a bit of a nutty texture to it. Let's taste it again. Hummus is one of those things that has so much depth of flavor. All right, so this is the duck falafel with dhaka spice. That is so good. Yeah. It's a little, it's a little crunchy. It has, it has a bit of a nutty kind of texture. We can see the chunks of duck, so it's not like the whole falafel is made with a duck. The orange layer, that's that's the dukkha spice. So dukkha spice is basically, it's an Egyptian condiment. It's a mix of spices, a mix nuts. of herbs and nuts. I guess that's kind of pounded Powder. together and then it's kind of sprinkled yes. on stuff. Yes. So it's not overly spicy, it's just a little spicy, but it adds a lot of texture. It definitely kind of like ups the game of the falafel. I really feel like I'm being taken on a journey around the world here with all these flavors. I mean, like, at least a journey in my mouth. We have more food coming. Yeah. Oh more my food God. Coming. More food coming. <laughs> Check this out. This is the Mathis take on chicken tikka. So you can see a huge skewer of chicken here. It looks cooked to perfection. What a beautiful dish. I honestly feel ashamed that I'm gonna have to destroy this plate. This is, this is just so beautiful. Hello, sir. 
Hi, this Hi. is Namish Bhatia. Hi, Namish. So you are the mastermind before, uh, behind the food here. Correct, correct. I am the man behind the onions and potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> we have a story for this restaurant and the food. That's why we, when we thought that we are doing so many countries and cuisines. Right, that's right. And uh, how would we, how it would be accepted locally? Yeah. So uh, th we, we, we said that there was a person, his name was Matthews. We created a pseudo character there. Kind of like and a cartoon character. Like a cartoon character. So Matthews lived in Mumbai and then from here he traveled to all those countries. Persia, which, was, which is Iran now, to Iraq, to UAE, to Syria, to Egypt, to Morocco. And via Afghanistan he came back to the Arabian Sea. He came into, back home. He came back home. Yeah. And after he came back home and he, he had a craving for this kind of food. Right he on. said, I want to eat this, but this is not what we get all the time here. Yeah. He wanted to eat it his way. A little uh, inspiration from that world. Yeah. But uh, he wanted the food to be presented like we do it uh, globally. Right. The taste should have uh, all the ingredients what they use, not doing any fusion per se. But do a little Indian touch to it. Right. I would say to Mumbai touch to it more than yeah. Indian touch. This is what uh, we're trying to do here. Is um, so we we have things which uh, which are very genuine, but a little global uh, touch. Uh, are we supposed to believe that this Mafis is actually you? <laughs> I think you all Mafis? of us are Mafis here. <laughs> Definitely, I am Mafis. Any single person who's serving you is a mafi. All right. The person who's cooking inside is mafi. Okay. So this is the manakish. Manakish. Okay. So, so this we got, I believe, the lamb manakish right here. All right. Let's let's yes. taste this. So unlike an Italian pizza, you would not find oregano in this, but you find its own spices, which also marries this, the meat and the the, the flour, the bread. That's right. You can see kind of like the bread. It's not tomato sauce, right? It's, it's the not tomato sauce. It's the harissa. It just got harissa and it's got a touch of yogurt. And you can see the redness here. It's it's the harissa spice and uh, it has a touch of yogurt. Correct. Yeah, there's no tomato sauce. You can you can taste the the bread. It's yeah, it's it's definitely a little stretchy. It, yes. It's it's only crunchy on the outside. Even though it looks like there's a lot of cheese, it, it doesn't really smother the pizza. You can definitely taste the lamb. The you can see it; it's under the cheese. It doesn't have a gamey, overly kind of like lamby taste. It's very pleasant, but I think it's mainly about the crust and the kind of like the harissa. I think that's really what what makes this uh, a unique slice of pizza. It's unlike any kind of pizza I've ever had. Like it looks just like a slice of pizza. It, just, it doesn't quite taste that way because of the uniqueness of the spice and the mixture in here. It's really something special. While I was talking with the main chef, we got our last dish. We got the tagine here. So let's uncover it. Let's see what lies beneath. That is a beautiful dish. At the bottom we have the uh, bhaji, yeah. which is the, the red kind of sauce, yes. right? It's, it's kind of like a tomato sauce. Yes. And then we it's have... mashed with potatoes. It's mashed with potatoes. And then we have the bread, which is the pow. And then we have the saffron rice all around, which is topped by this kind of mountain peak of caramelized onions. And then we also have a bit of the cheese and we have some uh, peas around and some tomatoes as well. Yeah. You, you eat this by dipping the bread inside, yeah, yeah, you scoop yeah, yeah. it, and then you eat it, right? Okay. That's let's how locals do it. Do it. Alright, let's do it like the locals. Go for it. Let's take one of these slices of bread. Let's scoop some of that badgy on. Put some of that cheese. Oh, you can really smell the tomato in there. You can definitely smell the saffron. There's a strong saffron smell. All right, this is the moment of truth. Oh man. It kind of smells like it could be marinara sauce at first. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a tomato marinara sauce. Mm -hmm. But the taste is completely different. Yes. And I'm guessing that's the masalas that they put yeah. inside. Yeah. It's just, it's very fragrant. It really packs a punch. It's not very spicy at all. But there's definitely a lot of different flavors in there, different elements that they use to make that. Like the locals. Mm. It's nice, rich, buttery. 
That's how it's supposed to be. I really love how you can taste individually all the different flavors. So you, when, when you mix it all together, you get a bit of everything and you can kind of taste the different layers, which is, again, really nice at this place. Let's take a full bite with rice and everything. Mmm. We got dessert. We got two different things here. And uh, I got the chocolate hummus right there. And we also got the rose petal creme brulee. So chocolate hummus actually seems like a no-brainer when you think about it because basically you have like this soft kind of texture which in this case is chocolate and here you have like these toppings like these caramelized chickpeas that you can see right there and uh, you have these almonds sprinkled all around so those will add some texture to it uh, just like you would have some kind of like condiments or kind of like some side pickles with hummus. Let's try this out. Mmm. Oh wow. That is really good. It's not as chocolatey as I expected it to be. It's dark chocolate, but usually dark chocolate is very heavy. This is very light. Maybe it's because of the very creamy texture. And I think I got a hint of an almond in there, which added a little bit of crunch. That's very nice. It's time for you to try it. Rose petal creme brulee. Let's check it out. Nice. Yeah? Nice. We have the cream or the custard. And we can see that it's kind of layered with this kind of syrup, uh, kind of sweet stuff on the outside. And of course we can see the rose petals. They're purple in this case. And I believe they're caramelized or they're ready to be eaten. Let's taste this. Wow. You can really taste that rose petal yeah. infusion in there. It, it, is. it really seeps even to the bottom of the creme brulee. It's not just on the top. It has a very like exotic kind of taste because, yeah. because of the, the rose, rose infusion. This is the perfect way to end an amazing meal. Definitely. I mean, some, some more amazing touches here. This was really quite the experience. Yeah. I really I really thank you for this, sir. I'm glad. I'm yeah, glad. It was, this was great, honestly, truly. Really.